Paul Pierce. Now this uh, non-liability of a peace officer, RCW 9A.46.090, you know, a peace officer shall uh, not be held liable in any civil action for an arrest based on probable cause, <laughs> enforcement in good faith of a court order, or any other action or omission in good faith uh, under this chapter arising from alleged incident of harassment by, uh, by any party to the incident. Yes. <laughs> Now, I'm a little concerned at peace officers uh, because I've informed law enforcement since November 20th of 2015. Yes, mm -hmm. you remember that one rule where you do have to have a petitioner acknowledge a court order? Yes, and I didn't receive actual notice of court hearings? Yes, and it was issued for 10 years. Oh, oh, oh. Now, it can't be in good faith when the prosecuting attorney doesn't report a violation of a protection order issued under 26.50 on the next judicial day as a two-count criminal complaint instead of waiting seven weeks. Ouch! And it can't be in good faith when law enforcement refuses to give me notices of court hearings. Instead, they wait until they arrest me for failure to appear approximately three to four weeks after the court hearing. Ouch! It really can't be in good faith when you don't uh, admit the evidence that I wasn't in Brennan, Washington. Pooch. You didn't get the surveillance camera footage that I wasn't in Squim, Washington. Ouch. Seems like there's a lot of bad faith in those that are in law enforcement. Now, you have no immunity from prosecution or liability. And for every city of the United States that has a city attorney, yes, a district attorney, ha, prosecuting attorney, pooch, mandatory reporters that have any knowledge of the crime of not enforcing the RCW requirements of each and every office of every city, state, county, and tribal government, that if you have knowledge of violation and information of uh, the restraint provisions of a protection order, you are required by law to inform those in law enforcement, file a criminal complaint so the individual accused can be arraigned. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Now, I know mandatory reporters are sitting there saying, well, I don't have to. <clears throat> well, has it been within 14 days? pow <laughs> Because as that individual that's being victimized for seven years and three months, yes, every time <laughs> I informed uh, mandatory reporters, yes, oaths, <laughs> badges, attorneys, <laughs> judges and justices, ooh -wee. <laughs> you decided that you could have knowledge of a crime without... Well, let's say you had information of issuing court orders because of the use of forgeries. Yes. You said you didn't have jurisdiction, but you do. Ouch! It goes for each and every individual throughout the United States that thought that I wouldn't sue them for having knowledge of courts not requiring the signature of a petitioner. Yes. The wrongful execution of court orders in a public library. See... This whole concept is of a uh, complaint, yes, citation or information, yes. When there's no signature of the petitioner, right, she wasn't there, pooch. When the handwriting isn't an actual person that can legally fill out forms, administrator and facilitators, ouch, ouch. When it involves international child abduction, pooch. The issuance of a dissolution of marriage where there were no rights given to the father or the children named, ouch. I'm absolutely fucking sure that the... Re <laughs>